a creature thought gone for 13,000 years is suddenly lounging in a sunlit barn. Some say science has revived a legend, others say it is only a clever remix of a familiar species. Today we follow the trail step by step to find out what really came back and what that means for the future. A private biotech company says three direwolf pups are alive today in the United States raised through cutting-edge genetics. The names feel larger than life. Romulus, Remus, Khaleesi. The company presents Calm Ranch Scene's playful pups' confident statements about a scientific milestone. At first glance, it feels like history has turned a page. A ghost from the Ice Age now naps on hay bales and tilts its head at the human holding the bottle. It is a story designed to light up headlines in our imaginations. But what exactly is a direwolf and how would anyone bring one back? To answer that, we need to rewind long before television fantasy turned the direwolf into an icon. We need bones dug from tar pits, microscopes aimed at ancient molecules, and a careful look at what de-extinction really means. In the mid-19th century, fossil hunters along the Ohio River first pulled strange canid bones out of the earth. The animal was placed in the genus Canis and given a name that translates loosely to fear-inspiring dog. For decades, that label stuck. The bones looked wolfish, the teeth were heavy. The skull was broader and longer than a gray wolf, the overall body about a quarter larger, built for gripping and cracking more than slicing. A century later, scientists working in the sticky black pools of Los Angeles found a treasure of direwolf remains. Tar preserved details that dry caves could not. Some researchers suggested that direwolves were different enough to deserve their own genus, but the idea did not take hold. For most of the 20th century, books and museums presented direwolves as beefed-up cousins of the wolves we know now. Then came the twist. In 2021, a team analyzing ancient proteins and fragments of DNA concluded that direwolves had set off on their own branch far earlier than expected. The split from other wolf-like animals may have happened roughly 5 to 6 million years ago. If true, that means direwolves were not just larger gray wolves. They were last survivors of an older, separate lineage that never mingled genes with gray wolves or coyotes even when they shared the same lands. Why would one disappear and the other persist? No single answer convinces everyone. One idea says direwolves specialized in very large prey and lost their primary food as those giants dwindled. Gray wolves interbreed with other canids and adapt quickly to changing conditions. Direwolves may have been locked into a narrower lane. Whatever the reason when direwolves fall silent, humans are still thousands of years from founding cities. No person ever photographed a living direwolf. We know them through chemistry bone and time. So how could anyone open a door back to a lost species? Scientists have explored three broad routes. Backbreeding looks for traits that linger in living relatives, then nudges them generation by generation, until an animal looks and behaves more like its ancestor. Take zebras with lighter striping and breed toward the least striped foals over decades, and you can end up with something that looks close to the quagga of South Africa, an equine lost to history in the 19th century. The result is visually striking, yet it is not the original quagga. The genes are a shuffled modern deck, not the extinct genome. Cloning tries to copy the original precisely. You take a preserved cell from the extinct animal, move its nucleus into an egg from a close relative, and hope development proceeds. That hope is fragile. Viability drops at every step. Years ago, researchers attempted this with a Spanish wild goat. One kid took a first breath, then complications followed. The moment taught a sobering lesson about how hard true cloning can be, especially when perfect cell samples are rare and delicate. Genetic engineering is the newest route. Extract tiny fragments of DNA from fossils, compare those fragments to the full genome of a living relative, and edit the living genome until key traits align with the extinct one. You might adjust hair growth, body size, fat storage, cold tolerance, skull proportions. The technique behind many of these edits is CRISPR, a molecular guide that can cut DNA precisely and encourage a cell to swap in a chosen sequence. It is powerful, but precision in a dish does not guarantee precision in a living body. Development is complex. Biology loves surprises. The direwolf project followed this third route. Researchers sifted through fossils. Two samples stood out as promising sources of genetic clues, one from a tooth found in an Ohio cave, and another from a skull in the American West. Those fragments did not yield a complete instruction book. Instead, they offered many scattered sentences. 
The team then lined those ancient sentences up against the complete genome of the gray wolf, the living species considered closest in overall makeup. From that comparison, they highlighted a short list of genes tied to visible traits. Head width and length, overall size, coat characteristics, a set of dozens of edits spread across a cluster of genes. The next steps moved from reading to building. Cells were edited in vitro. When the edits looked stable, the nuclei of the edited cells were transferred into dog egg cells, whose own nuclei had been removed. Embryos formed. Surrogates were chosen. Not every attempt progressed. Eventually, two pregnancies held long enough to deliver pups by surgical birth. The pictures show healthy, curious animals in a secure rural facility. Handlers report distinct personalities despite identical edits, a reminder that behavior is shaped by more than DNA. If you have ever known twins, you already understand how two matching genomes can lead to two unique individuals. Genes are the script, but life is the performance. If you could choose only one lost species to study up close for a day, which would you pick and why? Share your idea in the comments and tell us what experiment or observation you would try first. Does that make these pups true dire wolves? The cautious answer is no. They are edited gray wolves, designed to echo some visible features of dire wolves. The overall genomes are still overwhelmingly gray wolf, with a pinch of ancient flavor sprinkled on a few traits. Remember how close humans are to chimpanzees in DNA percentage terms, yet the differences are enormous in practice. A small number of gene edits can change a face, a coat, or a body plan, but that does not rewrite millions of years of divergence. That does not mean the work is trivial. It is technically demanding and opens doors to health research and conservation tools. The ability to culture edited cells, transfer nuclei, and support development in a surrogate is a frontier that touches many fields. Yet words matter. Calling the pups resurrected direwolves risks confusing the public about what de-extinction is and is not. The same company has declared ambitions to produce an elephant engineered to thrive in cold climates using mammoth gene variants, to revive a Tasmanian predator using marsupial surrogates, and to recreate traits of the dodo in a living pigeon relative. Each project faces a special challenge. Elephant pregnancies are extraordinarily long and require deep maternal care. Marsupials have a unique reproductive path that may require artificial pouches. Bird embryos develop inside eggs, which complicates gene editing and incubation. Given those hurdles, choosing an iconic canid for a first public reveal makes strategic sense. Wolves and dogs are abundant, their reproductive biology is well studied, and public fascination is guaranteed. A set of visible edits creates an animal that photographs dramatically and triggers headlines. Success brings funding and attention, debate follows, and debate can be healthy when it is honest about limitations. Now imagine life from the pup's perspective. In a wild pack, older animals teach young ones how to navigate landscapes, find food, and read complex social signals. In a secure preserve, human caretakers will guide their routines. Safety is a priority for the animals and for nearby communities. The company has already said these individuals will not breed and that only a handful more may be produced. Fenced land, drone patrols, regular health checks. It is a curated life, not a return to Pleistocene rhythms. Is there a path where animals like this serve an ecological role outside fences? Some advocates say large predators can repair ecosystems by pressuring herbivores and shaping behavior across landscapes. Others warn that releasing edited animals into modern ecosystems creates risks we do not yet understand. Communities of prey have changed since the Ice Age. Human settlements are everywhere. Carefully designed studies inside very large preserves might answer some questions, but science moves best when careful, repeatable results build trust. There is also the scale problem. A species is more than a single photogenic individual. It is a population with diversity, behaviors passed down through learning, and relationships with other species. To rebuild that takes decades, huge habitats, and policies that last longer than a news cycle. For now, edited wolves in a small preserve are not a restored direwolf lineage. They are living test beds for techniques that might help future conservation in other ways. For one northern subspecies, only two females are alive today, under constant protection. Scientists are racing to create embryos from preserved cells and to find surrogates from a closely related subspecies. Here, gene editing may one day repair damaging mutations or widen the gene pool. 
culture techniques refined in any high-profile de-extinction project could spill over and speed up life-saving work for animals that still have a clear ecological home. If the idea of using high-tech tools to rescue living species gives you hope tap, like and subscribe to follow the next chapters. The more people who learn how these tools really work, the better the chances that attention and funding flow to projects that protect working ecosystems as well as lab breakthroughs. So where does the direwolf story settle? We know the pups exist and appear healthy. We know their genomes are largely gray wolf with targeted edits inspired by ancient fragments. We know that true direwolves were more distant from gray wolves than most people realized, and that no one has recovered a complete intact direwolf genome. We know that the company plans to keep numbers small and controlled. We do not know whether the visible traits match ancient function in any meaningful way. We do not know what a lifetime in captivity does to behavior that would normally be taught by a wild family. We do not yet know whether the same methods could scale beyond a small number of carefully supervised animals. It is fine to feel wonder. It is also wise to ask careful questions. What should count as de-extinction? How should companies present their achievements to the public? Who decides when an experimental animal is ready to live outside a fence? And how do we ensure that the urgent protection of living species does not get overshadowed by photogenic science projects? Before we wrap up weigh in again, should de-extinction projects focus first on learning tools that directly help species alive right now, or pursue headline-grabbing recreations of lost icons? Tell us where you stand in the comments and what you would fund first if you held the checkbook. Stories shape how we think. A fantasy series made direwolves feel like guardians at the edges of human settlements. In our world, the real animals were powerful North American predators that left behind bone beds and chemical clues. They thrived for hundreds of thousands of years, watched ice retreat and forests shift, and then faded before cities rose. When you see a photo of a modern pup with frost-pale fur and a heavy skull, it is tempting to say the legend has returned. The more precise truth is both simpler and more complicated. The pups are not copies of the past. They are signals from the present that our tools can bend biology toward chosen goals sometimes beautifully, sometimes clumsily, never without consequences. The choice ahead is not science versus nature. It is how to use science to serve nature with clarity, Imagine a future where high-tech labs support rangers on the ground, where drones map habitats, while communities earn a living by keeping those habitats intact, where edited cells repair a genetic roadblock that would otherwise doom a population. In that future, a photo of a charismatic edited animal can still inspire, but success is measured by restored rivers' forests that hold their own and species that persist. If the pups grow into impressive adults under careful care, they will continue to teach. They will teach what gene edits can and cannot do. They will teach how behavior emerges in social canids raised without wild parents. They will teach the public that the past can guide the future without pretending to be the past. Let curiosity drive you to museums that hold Ice Age fossils. Let that same curiosity push you to support local conservation where you live. Small acts scale when millions join. Are these wolves truly back? Should de-extinction be done? Tell us your thoughts in the comments. Like always, if you enjoyed the video, be sure to give us a big thumbs up and leave us some love in the comments section. To keep up to date with all of our awesome videos, be sure to hit subscribe and turn your notifications on to never miss a thing. Until next time, do take good care of yourself.